Welcome to this video on the IC Toolbox. It is one in a series of tutorials about the project. This video focuses on the Toolbox. After a brief introduction of the project, it highlights common features of the tools and provides a brief introduction to each of them. ICCEE, or short, IC, stands for Improving Cold Chain Energy Efficiency in the Food and Beverage Sector. It is a European project funded under the EU's Horizon 2020 program. The focus of the project is on enhancing energy efficiency along entire cold supply chains in the food and beverage sector. For further information on the project, please also visit our project homepage at www.ic.eu. The mission of IC is based on three pillars, first, to facilitate the dissemination of energy efficiency measures within cold supply chains in the food and beverage sector, in particular in small and medium-sized companies. Second, to take a holistic perspective on entire cold supply chains instead of looking at individual companies only. Third, to finally trigger and accelerate investments in energy efficient technologies. The Toolbox seeks to contribute to this mission by offering a set of tools covering different aspects of energy efficiency improvements in cold supply chains. It consists of seven spreadsheets with a common look and feel. All tools are offered as standalone files. This means that you can simply download a copy of the tools and work on them locally as in any other spreadsheet solution. Differently put, you do not need to upload any data to a third-party server or cloud system, unless you choose to do so on your own, of course. Furthermore, with one exception, all of the tools come along without macros. The tools are available in the eight languages of the IC project and can soon be downloaded for free on our project website. If you are interested in them, there is also a forthcoming series of workshops on the utilization of the tools in the second half of 2021. If you want to be part of these workshops, just get in touch with us via the contact form on our project website. Let's take a closer look at the tools, here is one of them. When working with them, you may note that each tool has its own color to distinguish them more easily. In this case, it is green. All tools contain several spreadsheets. The first page in the tools is always the info sheet. The info sheet provides you with basic information about the tool. Probably the most important feature on the info sheet is language selection. By clicking on the drop down button, a list with the different available languages will open. Simply select your language, and the entire document will change accordingly. One important remark. You should only change the language of an empty document. Once you have entered any data, do not change language again, drop downs in the tools are language sensitive and will not change after a selection has been made. We will go back to English now. A second important item in the tools is color coding. You will find that cells have different background colors. Colored fields, in this example green, are the only fields that you should modify as a user. Gray fields either contain values that are transferred from a different section of the workbook or that have been calculated from your input. You might have noticed that only some cells of the document are accessible, this is to facilitate usage and to minimize input errors. Let's proceed a bit further in the tool, next to the info sheet. There is usually one or several input and output sheets that you can find in the navigation bar. Each sheet generally starts with an introduction. Depending on the tool, further information can also be found in the different sections of the tool. The input sheets are the place where you will have to insert your data. In some cases, these are numbers. In other cases, there are drop-down fields that you may choose from. On the result sheets, you will find a couple of overview tables and visualizations. These sheets will only provide you with a proper overview of results once all the input sheets have been filled in. So please don't be surprised if an empty sheet indicates any errors. Before getting back to the overview of tools, there is one additional feature to highlight. In some cases, you might want to export and share the input data and results. 
For this purpose, the layout of the documents has been designed to approximately fit to A4 paper format. Even if some compromise has been made to accommodate for both the convenient spreadsheet usage and print layout, you can thus relatively easily create a report from your analysis. After this general introduction to the sheets, let's get back to the toolbox. The different tools are intended to help addressing energy efficiency from different perspectives. The first tool in the row is the cold supply chain tool that we have just seen. The aim of this tool is to help you understand and minimize the overall specific energy consumption along cold supply chains. For this purpose, it allows to analyze the following. Energy requirement in storage and transport activities. And time temperature effects on the food quality and the resulting energy consumption. As for most of the tools, its target group are supply chain and environmental managers interested in the energy and environmental performance of their cold supply chains. The second tool is referred to as the life cycle assessment tool. It goes beyond the mere energy perspective and broadens up the view on environmental performance. Its specific aim is to help identifying the environmental impact of cold supply chains. For this purpose, the environmental impact for a set of products is modeled for three of the most common impact categories, global warming potentials, cumulative energy demand and water consumption. The determination of global warming potentials follows the 2013 method by the IPCC. Cumulative energy demand is quantified upon data from EcoInvent. And water usage is analyzed using the AWARE method. The third tool is the life cycle costing tool. It helps you to determine the economic viability of specific energy efficiency measures. Energy efficiency measures often entail additional investments, yet they also reduce energy and other costs in the long run. This tool allows you to carry out simple analyses of the costs and benefits of energy efficiency measures as compared to a current situation. The analysis covers conventional economic calculus from a company perspective. Furthermore, it also allows to look at the topic from a societal perspective. The fourth tool's purpose is orientation. It shall help you to benchmark your own perception of energy efficiency with peers. Its specific aim is to create awareness and understanding on the role of non-energy benefits within companies of the cold supply chain. Non-energy benefits are advantages next to mere energy cost savings from the implementation of energy efficiency measures. They include, for example, improvements in quality, maintainability or image. The tool allows you to reflect on non-energy benefits in a structured manner and to compare your perception with the views of other companies active in cold supply chains. These underlying data originates from a survey carried out in early 2020 within the IC project. The fifth tool serves for a deeper dive into non-energy benefits by exploring them further. The aim of this tool is to identify non-energy benefits and their value for a decision-making process on energy efficiency measures, also considering the effects in whole cold supply chains. For this, you will work through predefined lists of non-energy benefits and analyze their relevance along a set of simple steps. And then, there is the sixth tool. Differently from the previous ones, it is mainly for experts. It combines the cold supply chain tool, the life cycle assessment tool and a multi-criteria evaluation method to understand modifications of input parameters on environmental performance. More specifically, it helps you to understand the impact of adjusting temperature and storage levels on five of the main impact criteria used in life cycle analysis. In the tool, you may select different weights for the impact categories and then carry out an automated multi-criteria assessment. In addition to the previous set of tools, there is a final element in the box, the guidance tool. Its purpose is to provide the user with an overview of the different tools as you have just seen. It also includes a collection of links to national support schemes that may help you realize energy saving project. And finally, it includes references to best practice examples, or fact sheets, 
on energy efficiency measures that have specifically been developed within the project. This was our introduction to the IC Toolbox. Curious about more details about the tools? Further videos are available in our channel. Thank you for watching.